G'day virtual drivers, it's Requiem and today we're going to look at the Flak 38 20mm truck for the German side. Uh, so here you're starting off in your hangar or garage, whatever you want to call it. And the same options as the Gaz in a way. Have a quick circle around and have a look. So for modifications, uh, you can go with armor piercing shells, high explosive shells or a mixture. And you can have some options to remove gun shells that improve your field of view. I like using the HE, especially against airborne targets. So, looking at the tactical codes, these are available as well. Which you can put on the vehicle, however you like. A couple of camo options, standard camo, as well as a white option if you're in the snow. And then the last one's going to be that standard photo that'll be on the uh, dashboard. Right, so going inside of the vehicle, you've got the driver position, you've got a sun visor, pressing N will bring that down and up. Left windows and C will pop out the driver visor. And we've got some blinkers on the left side and the right side if you wanted to tell someone which direction you're going, obviously. The horn, your instrument panel lights if it's dark, you got headlights of course. Now on the right side you've actually got a search light. So if you use this you can move it around, up, down, left and right. Obviously it ain't going to be useful at night time. It's got the windscreen wipers. Now they come on one at a time and they turn off one at a time. So each press of the button is going to be to get each wiper on and off. And if you press E, that's going to get the engine started. And then you can uh, just drive around however you want. So. We'll have a look at the uh, site, because that's going to be the bread and butter of what you're trying to do with this vehicle. So for the site itself, there's a few different components to look at. Uh, there's a telescopic site, which is just relating to ground targets only. Um, there's also a backup site, which we'll look at in a sec. But uh, the main thing you're looking at is going to be the anti-aircraft site. And for that, you've got a pivoted ring in the middle. And uh, there's a small, medium, and a large ring based on the speed of the targets that you're going for. And before the engagement would take place, you would have an idea of what airplanes are flying in your area. And um, they would equip a certain ring depending on what they're expecting to encounter. And that would be in there for the whole engagement, but we can change it as needed during the fight. And since there are three rings you can use, that means there's going to be three different speed scales as well. And we're going to have a look at that in just a sec. And you can adjust it with that speed scale adjustment knob. And don't forget there's that pendulum as well used for the pivoting ring. So this is taken from the station note section in game, which you can look at in more detail if you like. Um, like I said, there's three sites available. The telescopic site, the anti-aircraft site, and the backup iron sites. Um, as with all turrets, you're going to pick it up using the T key. And you can swap between each of these sites using left, shift, and T, depending on what you're trying to shoot at. Now looking at picture number one, this is the view through the telescopic site for ground targets. And you note that its scale is in mils. And this means it will let you range targets accordingly based on their size in the site. As you can see in the picture on the right of that, numbers 10 through 16. Now for the anti-aircraft site, it's better to look at this in motion. So we're going to go in game now and have a look at that. Alright, so on the bottom here is a speed scale. And there you can see the pivoting ring. This is the size that's going to be used for the speed scale between 50 meters a second and 75 meters a second. So if I wanted to increase this um, speed, I'm going to use the gun sight range adjustment key, which is right alt semicolon. I hold it down. That's going to start increasing the speed. Then once we go past 75 meters a second, we can go to the next speed scale and the pivoting ring is going to get bigger. because This is the bigger ring for this scale. Keep holding it down. And once we go past 115, we'll be between 115 and 180 scale with the biggest ring of all. And I use W and S to adjust the speed scale personally. So this is what it looks like down the site. Here we can see that's the biggest ring available. So if I hold down the right alt and period key, we're going to reduce the speed scale. And we switch to the second ring. 
and then keep holding it down we'll get to that first speed scale and it's going to give us the smallest string possible um, if we focus on the pivoting ring here you can see that it's shaped more like an ellipse right now because the gun is facing downwards but as we lift it up it changes from an ellipse to become more of a circle and what we're going to pay attention to is the outer ring and the center bead and these are going to determine um, how you aim and what your deflection is going to be for a target and because this outer ring pretty much takes care of deflection for you um, you have to estimate target relatively accurately um, so we're going to have a look at the process you go through in order to shoot against an airborne target so the first step we've talked about you're going to estimate the aircraft speed and you'll set the speed scale accordingly and uh, if you want to interpolate like a precise speed then you can look at the speed scale using left shift and v then you estimate the angle off the target and you aim so the projected flight path of the target moves through the center bead and your angle off determines where you aim so at 90 degrees angle off this is going to be max deflection and you'll place the aircraft's nose on the ring when the aircraft is at 45 degrees angle off this is going to be half deflection so you put it halfway between the ring and the center bead and it doesn't matter what the shape is um, you're always going to take half of the distance between the ring and the center bead and if there was no deflection at all required that's going to be zero degrees and 180 degrees angle off you just put the nose of the aircraft or the tail of the aircraft on the bead but this is only going to provide you an initial firing point so once you start firing you're going to adjust your aim based on observation of the tracer's flight path and the last point to note is that your maximum range is going to be around 1200 meters against airborne targets now pressing shift t will bring up the backup sight you can use this if you like but you're not going to get the same kind of accuracy as you get out of the previous sight we just looked at now pressing ctrl c brings you to the commander position and this is a multi-crew vehicle so you can have one person as a gunner one as a driver and one as a commander there's different options you can use for the commander position as well you can send up different colored flares and uh, you can also bring up the Lugo and shoot that but an um, important feature of the commander position is going to be the binoculars these are obviously going to give some magnification what you're trying to look at further off in the distance so after moving out of the driver position pressing ctrl c that will take you to the gunner position pressing t will pick up the gun then you can adjust the speed scale based on the speed of the target you're going for and if you press shift t this is going to look directly over the site like we talked about these a20s and they're going to be doing a diving attack so i set it to 150 meters a second is my standard for a diving target now the angle off isn't very high i put it just away from the center bead start shooting when you're ready you can do it in one long burst or several short bursts if you want just pay attention to the angle off of the target so as it starts increasing we start increasing the amount of lead see some got some good hits on that first a20 i'm turning around got some dc3s so it's going to need us to bring the speed scale back if you want to be accurate otherwise you can just use the previous one if you want to do that as well but it is less lead on the bigger ring this whole concept is about fire and adjusting so it's going to take some practice just got to remember that full deflection on the outside of the ring is going to be the same no matter what its shape is. This is a P-38 diving in, so again got that high amount of speed between 150 and 180 meters a second. And you can just fire and adjust. It's just something that's going to take some practice on your part in order to get proficient at it. Obviously smaller targets and faster targets such as these can be much more difficult to hit especially at higher levels of deflection and you wouldn't expect to necessarily blow it up in one um, pass but as they make their attacks you should at least be able to hit them once or twice and it cause enough damage to make them leave the area at the very least. And against airborne targets it is preferable to take the high explosive I think you're more likely to be able to cause chances of a fire or other structural damage by doing that rather than relying on armor piercing. Defending yourself against targets pointing straight at you are the hardest ones to go for because the target's going to be obscured by the center bead. So you need to shoot and then look away to see if you cause any damage or where the traces have gone before making another adjustment. 
to here. So we've got another A20 coming in towards us. Straight on, so put the beat on and start shooting. Have a quick look. See where the traces have gone. Look at it and fire again. And start firing again and hold it down. And cause enough damage to make him break off a little bit. So I don't have too much else to say about using this any aircraft gun. Other than the fact you remember to use your speed accurately and to uh, set your angle off accordingly based on the ratio of the full deflection of the shape of the sight. So for the next few minutes there's going to be some more examples without any commentary but um, after that's up we'll go and look at the ground tack portion. All right, so we're going to attack some ground targets now. Some trucks on the road up ahead. So car to a stop, control C to switch to the gunner. Press T to pick up the gun. Then shift T. We'll go to the AEA site first. Press shift T again, we'll go to the telescopic site. Now we'll use this for ranging. So lining up the target on the line, maybe 800,000 meters. So lead for the target and start shooting and look for the tracer and see where it goes. And you just adjust as needed. So now we have a good approximation of where the range is. It's going to make hitting all these other targets much, much easier. These are softer targets. So I've gone with the high explosive again. It's actually my favorite explosion coming off these uh, fuel trucks. And we know it's going to be a little bit further out, further down the road they are, so you can adjust the vertical lead as needed. Um, but yeah, once you get that range initially settled, 
just shoot in the ballpark and you'll be able to take out a convoy pretty quickly. Now for stationary emplacements it's a little bit harder to go for but it's still a truck here so if you measure it out it looks to be about 1500 meters or so maybe so we'll fire for a round and see where it hits it goes a little bit too far so we'll reduce the range a little fire and evaluate again it might have been close to hitting and that one looked like it might have hit so we'll hold down the trigger and fire off a burst and do the same thing again and looks like we killed that truck so making those single shots used to kind of gauge how accurate your distance estimation is is important because then once you kind of dial it in then you can hold down the trigger and just fire away and get a lot of rounds in that one area to score some kills this is an emplacement of a uh, artillery gun it's pretty hard to see it, let alone trying to measure it. So again, you can just fire away and look at the resulting trajectory of the bullet and see where it goes. And once it looks like it's good, hold down the trigger, and just fire away and soak the area up with the explosive rounds and it looks like we got another kill. So now that you know the approximate range, you don't have to do any more sighting, you can just fire away. Maybe adjust it slightly, but once you're in the general vicinity, you'll be able to score more hits. That'll complete the video on using the Flak 38 against air targets and against ground targets. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check the six.